So Algebra 2, this is our homework um, answer key from last time with the um, solving by factoring. So you should factor and then get your solutions from factoring. So these are just the solutions. I don't show the factors. And then if you notice, 33 is a tough one, um, and maybe even 31, because there's actually three answers for these because of the fact that you can factor something out first. So if those last two you struggled with, they were definitely tougher problems. So um, let me know though if you guys are still struggling with factoring because we're kind of moving away from that for now. So um, I didn't have a chance to print my notes for these. So um, I wrote them out. So this is what your notes should look like um, if you printed them. Otherwise, um, you can kind of fill them in with me as we go here. So um, they wanted you to start by listing the perfect squares. Now, we're going to be using perfect squares today. However, if you have a good calculator or a calculator that simplifies th this perfect squares for you, this might be the first part of this lesson will be a little bit easier. So like perfect squares, you might know. So like the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3. So those are kind of the common perfect squares. So I'm just going to go up in order. Now, obviously I teach math, but I know these off the top of my head because I use them often. Um, so these are some of the perfect squares we can encounter. So these are the numbers that if I take the square root, it's a whole number answer. Now there's some numbers like here, down here, 108 and 120 aren't perfect squares. They're, they don't make it on that list. They would be a decimal if I try to figure them out. So what we want to do is we want to write it as a simplified square root. So what we want is the smallest number possible underneath the root. We want no decimals. So So what we're going to do is what I would suggest um rewriting the perfect square or the square root using some of these numbers. So I'm going to try to find perfect squares that go into these numbers and kind of break it up. We want to look first for the biggest perfect square. We want to look for the biggest perfect square that goes into it. So if I'm starting with the square root of 108, I'm going to kind of work my way backwards. So 108 is in between here. So approximately be like 10 or 11 um, as a decimal. But 100 doesn't go into 108 evenly. It'd be a decimal. So I go down the list. 81 doesn't go into 108. 64 um, does not go into 108. For a second, I thought maybe it did. But if you divide 108 by 64, it's not a whole number. 49 doesn't go into 108, but 36 does. The square root of 36 times 3 is how we can break down the square root of 108. So, <coughs> sorry. So we used a perfect square to break that apart because 36 times 3 is 108. Now the square root of 36 is just 6. So I can take that, and now I have the smallest number possible underneath that square root. <coughs> Sorry. Now you might ask how I got that number. Again, I'm just dividing. I didn't show the dividing, but you could do it, divide with your calculator. Now, some of your calculators may just do this for you. That's great if your calculator does that. If it doesn't, we have to learn this process. Now, 120 seems like it should break down quite a bit. Again, try. Um, we're going to be in between here again. 100 doesn't go in 81. You're going to keep going down. If you keep trying numbers, Nothing all the way down to 4 doesn't go into the square root of 120 for perfect squares. So 4 times 30 is 120. Now square root of 4 is just 2. And square root of 30, 
Now again, it seems like we should simplify the square root of 30, but if I try to break it up like five and six, two and three, none of those numbers are perfect squares. So this is as simplified as this one gets. So being able to simplify square roots is something that you're gonna to need to do. You probably did it a little bit in geometry. Um, and like I said, you guys had me for that, so hopefully you remember that. So um, next thing we're gonna talk about is imaginary numbers. <laughs> So um, what imaginary numbers are is basically someone had decided we need an answer when we take the square root of a negative. If you try to take the square root of like negative four, your calculator is going to say like a non-real solution or error or something. It's going to kind of get mad at you because it's not possible to think of a number that multiplied by itself will give you a negative. So what imaginary numbers are made of is when we want to take the square root of a negative. So what someone did was invented a negative number, or a negative, the square root of a negative. So the square root of negative one is i. And I use an i kind of like a little, looks like a little goofy j because of, um, I want it to be obvious it's an i and not a one. So this is gonna be important to know that i is just the square root of negative one. Now, kind of one of the important things to also know is that I take i squared. So if I do i squared, it's i times i. So it's the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Well, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is the square root of negative 1 squared. So that square and square root cancel. So it equals negative 1. So that's a really important thing that we're going to want to use is the fact that i squared is negative one. We'll use that in a little bit. So those two facts are gonna be important. So if I'm working with imaginary numbers, it's because I'm trying to do the square root of negative four. Well, square root of four is just two. So instead of saying the square root of negative four is two, we're gonna say the square root of negative four is two i. Because we can break this up as the square root of four times the square root of negative one, square root of four is two, square root of negative one, and we learned is i, so we'd say the square root of negative four is two i. Same idea here, square root of negative 49. This is the square root of 49 times the square root of negative one, so this is seven i. Now it gets a little bit trickier when this isn't a perfect square. So square root of 72, if you look up at our top, is not a perfect square. So not only do I have to break it up, I also have to um, try to find, um, or get that i out of there. So I'm gonna break this up as the square root of 72 times the square root of negative one. So this is gonna be i. But 72, again, try to find the biggest perfect square that goes into it. So I go back up here. And 72 is in between 8 and 9, so 64 doesn't go into it, 49, but 36 does. So I'm going to use that. 36 times 2. So this is going to be 6 root 2, but then don't forget we have this i over here. So I'm going to put the i out in front. So this answer is going to be 6i square roots of 2. So that square root, um, I took the square root of 36 is 6 that i gets pulled out in front of there. So 6i squared to 2. All right, so um, on your notes, you don't have to flip the page, but I do. Um, so we're kind of... I might be changing my mind about this a little bit. Um, okay, I'm going to stop the video right now, but we might end up altering homework a little bit and just work with imaginary numbers. So um, I'm going to... Go to, I'm gonna stop our video and start a new one. Actually, I'm changing my mind, I'm not. I'm gonna keep going, and then we're gonna stop our notes early, earlier than I planned. So we're gonna do just this first part here, and we're gonna wait on the solving by square roots. So we're gonna simplify with the i's here. We wanna treat i like a variable. So 
um, like an X or a variable like in a problem. But we want to remember that I squared equals negative one. We're going to end up using that quite a bit here. So we can multiply these together just as we are multiplying um, negative 4x times 5x. So negative 4 times 5 is a negative 20. i times i is i squared. Now we have i squared equals negative 1. So I can replace i squared with negative 1. So negative 20 times negative 1 is just going to be a positive 20. Let's actually go down and do this one here. So the next one is the fact that we have i to the 12th power. Well, I know that i squared is negative one. So I would like to rewrite this so that I'm using i squared. i squared, in order to get a 12 here, I'd make this a six, because two times six would give me 12. But I know i squared is negative one, to the sixth power, negative one to the sixth power is gonna be a positive one because it's gonna be negative one six times. And every time I have an even number of negatives, it's gonna be positive. It's gonna be a positive one. Now these next two problems look really similar and, and this was a little bit of a struggle in our most recent test um, is the difference between these two. This one, is asking us to FOIL and this one's just asking us to combine like terms. So here we're going to do first outer inner last. Here we're just going to distribute the negative and combine like terms. So 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times a negative 3i is a negative, sorry, 24i. 5i times 2 is 10i. And 5i times a negative 3i is a negative 15i squared. Now these two are like terms, so I can put those together. So that's going to be a negative 14i. But then we have this i squared. There, we know that's negative 1. So this really becomes plus 15. Sorry, I ran out of room here. And then I can put these two together because those are like terms. So 16 and 15 is going to be 31. The only thing that's different about the way we write this, the standard form with the i is you always write i last. So this is 31 minus 14i. And then finally, we'll stop with this one and then I'll just alter homework a little bit. Um, we're going to distribute this in. So this would be plus 3i, and then I have 8 minus 2 is 6, 5i and 3i is going to be 8i, and that's all we do in this one, just combining like terms. So um, I'm going to wait on the solve by square root. I want to make sure you guys are okay with all the imaginary numbers before we go further. Um, so we're going to alter this. So let me grab my book real quick and just check. Actually, I think I can maybe figure it out. Oh, I don't know. Let me see. So probably just shorten the homework up a bit, which I'm sure none of you guys will mind about. But... And this is back from chapter five, because I kind of skipped this. It didn't make a ton of sense where it was for us. Um, so we're actually going to do, actually we'll do quite a bit of this now that I realize. Um, so we're gonna do just six through 16. It wants us to do the evens. I'm trying to decide if we should do. Actually, I'm going to switch it. Sorry. I'm going to go 6 through 16 all. Sorry. So I'm going to alter this slightly just so you guys get that practice with the I. So not the evens. We're going to do all. 
but then we'll wait on this stuff for next time. So we'll talk about that next time. And I'm probably going to alter that a little bit. So six through 16 all. Still not bad. I think it's 11 questions. So um, I'll, um, I'll upload this and then um, let me know if you guys are struggling at all with the imaginary numbers before we move on to solving, which we'll do next time. So save the notes um, and then we'll finish that next time. Have a great day, guys. Bye.